Hello everyone. Um, yesterday I was really lucky and got to spend the day with my lovely friends Debbie and Joe Zavinsky and whilst I was with them I persuaded Debbie to show me her method of darning using a darning mushroom and Debbie will show us later in this video how she did that. I hope you like my beautifully aesthetic um, arrangement here with the flowers from Ginger House Garden, um, milk bottle of wildflowers, various other bits and bobs. Um, I promised you I'll never get a slick and professional podcast, but I can make it prettier sometimes. I can hide behind the flowers when I'm feeling self-conscious and talk to you around the edges. Um, so yeah, darning. Um, I know a lot of you are sock knitters like me, although well, I must admit I haven't knitted any for a while. Um, but then you have families of sock wearers, and particularly hard-wearing sock wearers like that. Now I'm not going to even begin to attempt to darn this just now, because it's so big I don't have a darning washroom big enough, um, or the skills right this minute. But what you can also see up at the top, I don't know if you can tell here, is how thin that particular patch is. Now here's the bit Debbie darned for me yesterday, and you'll see the video of her doing that. Um, and we talk about how traditionally it was very important for people to match their darning yarn exactly to the colour of the sock. You can see that, that really weak patch there. Um, but now visible mending is so much more popular and recognised as a skill and a craft in its own right and therefore worthy of being seen. Um, Jonathan, Mr Lockett, has just literally worn these socks through. Um, I think with some West Yorkshire Spinners signature sock yarn, but there's such a beautiful pattern that Penny knitted him that although really they should just be ditched, I can't possibly ditch them. Um, you can see even there, but you can see the sun shining through the hole in the heel. But look at that design. That needs preserving. Um, this sock is some of my, um, one of my hand dyed sock blanks, um, which I can tell instantly because of the way it's micro striped. But this has been a casualty of lovely Lotta. And I think what I'll do with this sock is literally chop the toe off and re -knit a toe and because I want a sock not a work of art I won't worry too much personally about whether the yarn matches. I may have some of the sock blank left, you always have leftovers with 100 grams of sock yarn. Um, I could just make it into a, a mitten with a weird growth um, but I will try to fix it. Um, but it won't be a darn for that, it'll be a chop, a pick up and a re-knit but I might try and darn this little hole here whilst I talk to you. So, as I say, um, said, Debbie is going to be showing us how she darned with the mushroom. Um, this is a modern remake, but it's very beautifully turned wooden darning mushroom. I love them and I've started collecting them. I think my favorite is an old one that's sort of a greeny color and it's painted almost like barge art with flowers, or a very sort of thick, almost enameled effect of flowers, but worn almost completely bare on the top, so you've just got the flowers coming around the edge. It's obviously been a thing of beauty that has been used and used and used, and that makes me love it even more. If it was pristine, I would think it was just a little whimsy that someone had decorated. The fact that it's completely worn down on the top makes it something very special indeed. So Debbie used the browning mushroom, but I'm very lucky because I happen to have, sorry about the beep, um, I was staying somewhere with a dishwasher. We don't have a dishwasher. It's very mod con. I don't even know how to make it work. I think I might just go and open it. One second, you can have a view of the bins. I know how to make it be quiet. So I'm going to darn with a speed weave. Now these are a very old invention. You can see it was three and sixpence and it was marketed as Lanka 
Lancashire's smallest loom. Um, and you can sometimes still pick these up on eBay. They got very popular when they were rediscovered. Um, so they can be quite expensive. And what it comprises of is this metal gizmo. Now you see these teeth, they move. You've got the flanges at the top and they move them back and forwards. Can you see? And then you have a wooden disc, which does come with it. I've still got the elastic band that would have been on it originally, but the elastic band will be so perish, the rubber in it, I don't think it will hold. I can give it a go. So I've got a hair bobble attached. So I'm going to show you a very quick bit of darning on this sock with this and this but I don't have my instructions, so bear with me. Um, right now I'm gonna change the angle of the camera so I can hold it over what I'm doing. I'm gonna have a swig of tea and I will be back with you in a second. Okay, right, so hopefully I've set this up right. So here I have the disc, um, wooden with a groove, and I'm going to put it <laughs> in the conveniently created by Lotta hole and kind of center it around that hole there. I'm then going to think about this. Uh, no, I think I have to take one second, bear with me. Brain's not very quick to compute. And without breaking this, I'm gonna try and get at the old bit of elastic. I think this is going to involve a bit of editing. Okay, so I've got the old bit of elastic. Put the. So, so here I have the um, disc. I'd put it in there, kind of centering what I want to fix. Um, nice little chew hole, courtesy of Lotta McKelvey. And I've got there a bit of elastic. I'm going to give it a go. As I say, it might just give up the ghost and break, but we'll give it a try. It broke, so I thought that might happen. Um, nifty bit of knotting. It, <laughs> it broke again. Okay, so here's one that I didn't prepare enough earlier. So. We'll have a bit of a sort of scooby dooby dooby magical um, time where you're going to not be seeing me fighting with this. Um, we're going to be speeding this bit up and turning off the blether of me saying, ah, it's not working. So when I was doing this yesterday to show Debbie and Joe, my hair bottle also broke. As you can see, I'm having a good old fight with it. If you had a nice stretchy elastic band with plenty of padding, that's a technical term, obviously for stretch, you wouldn't be having the battle I'm having um, that I haven't got right on the second. Nina, Nina, fast forward, fast forward. Um, whoopsie. It was bad enough yesterday, and now this is just something else altogether. Okay, so what I've done here is I've put the elastic band around the sock, and now I'm going to try and manipulate the loom into position because that goes there and the band. I think there is a much easier way of doing this. I think I've absolutely made this as difficult as I possibly could for myself. So guys, if you get one of these, read the instructions, don't have broken equipment and we'll go. So there we go. So I've got the um, disc inside um, 
my sock under the hole and I've got the, the weaving loom attached. Now I want to have those pretty much upright. I'm trying to get them, but there probably is a way to do this as well, to get them all lying flat like that. Okay. As I mentioned before, I'm not going to use a matchy matchy yarn. I'm going to use a strongly contrasting one because I can and because it makes me happy. I'm going to show you these beautiful scissors and this lovely needle case come from my friends um, Ian and Trisha at the Knitting Gift Shop and they're the kind of tools that make doing anything just that little bit more special. Um, super sharp as sharp scissors, so I keep them in a tin, Emma Ball, product placement from my shop and this beautiful barrel, wooden barrel needle case. And final product placement, these are um, special new needles from Pony and they've been coated in black with a white eye so they're easy to see and I absolutely for the life of me cannot remember what it is they don't have in them or they do have on them but it's something that makes them really nice to use. Um, yeah, epic fail on my part in telling you why they're good, just they are, okay? So what I'm going to do is just bury my thread here. I'm going to do a little stitch. Now, I did mention I don't have the instructions with me. I may not need that little stitch. What I'm doing now is, oopsie, what I want these to stand up right. Carrying the yarn up over one of those teeth, back down, and I'm going to do another little stitch. And when you see Debbie's darning, you'll see it's a very similar principle, only mine's made a tiny bit easier by having this gadget to hold it all taut and to give me nice straight um, warp lines. Now, have I twisted that? Yes, I have. So I want to come back under there because I've made a mistake. Um, so I think I need to go that way with my needle. I went the other way before. Up and uh, uh, get this one to stand up straight. <laughs> so I will speed this up. You won't have to watch and endure me looping each of these in turn. I will have a sort of looking like I'm doing it super fast. One thing I learned from Debbie yesterday was that you should always include more than just your hole in the darn. Um, in this instance, because this is a darn requirement due to dog, um, the sock hasn't worn around the hole. Normally a darn appears where the sock has been worn and worn and worn, like this one. Um, <laughs> convenient hole there. And you can see it's got so thin that eventually those stitches will break and give way. So in that case, I would have to darn kind of all the way around out here to, if there were a hole there, what I'm going to do is stop that hole developing um, by putting a big darn in it. Um, but you should go outside the edge. Lots of just bit a hole in this, so there isn't that wear and tear, but I'm still going to practice and do it bigger than I absolutely have to. I'd probably stretch this a bit tighter than Debbie does on her demo. Um, but as you saw, I was struggling a wee bit with my equipment. And I know a bad work person blames their tools, but it wasn't going well. Um, read the instructions first, Lucy. I probably should have made sure I had a much straighter line along here to make the weaving more effective. There we go. 
Now, as it happens, I haven't threaded enough thread onto my needle. So I'm breaking all the rules, I think, and just tucking that in there to keep it secure. So, hmm, let's have a two color darn, that be fun. So here's some orange. These are just some four ply hand dyed um, of my own, merino nylon sock yarn. Um, traditionally it was, you'd have very carefully color matched and very, very fine um, darning yarn. Um, because socks were a lot finer, as, as Debbie points out. So I'm going to hide that end in there. Oh, sun's coming out. So the first pass, I'm going to flip all of these bars in one direction. And can you see, they've raised one arm of this darn upwards. So I don't know if there's a right way or a wrong way to start this. I'm just going to go in there and go... Bu -bu 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 -bu. I'm probably going in the wrong direction. Hang on, let's make it easy. So I'm going under, 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 and under, and under. I'm bringing my orange arm all the way down. And then I'm going to catch it at this end, so do a little stitch. And then I will flip my bars at the top. You can see they've all changed the direction. So now I'm going to go over. So that one should be under that one. And then, now I think I'm doing something wrong here because I think this should be even easier. And if any of you are Zoom Loom pros, well, not Zoom Loom, um, these speed weave pros, that's the word I wanted. You can let me know where I've messed up. Um, but I'm a great believer in, even if you can't do it absolutely perfectly, you can still show people the principle of something. Um, I never try to claim knowledge or perfect results. It's just, I'm going to give it a go. Do you want to watch? Um, okay, so then important to catch it at that end and then flip it back over. And we are now going um, <laughs> my brain's tired. What have I done wrong? Have I gone under two? I have. So you can see I've made a mistake here. Or have I? I don't know. No, I haven't. No. So I'm going to go over that one. Under that one. And under. And as you've seen how badly bashed this sock is, you might again be thinking, why on earth is she fixing it? Because I can, because it's a challenge, because why not give it a go? Um, socks take a lot of time to knit. Um, you know, and if there's a way of giving them a bit more life, let's, let's go for it. So it's not meshing as neatly, but when this is washed and um, worn a bit, it will all just beautifully mesh back together. I tell you what I'm doing wrong. I should be bringing my needle higher up, I think. And I think that would make it a lot easier to go under. Just as you can see why I'm not a weaver. I'm a, there, if I take it right up, I think this is called the shed, but again, I may be wrong. There's that bit where I went wrong with the t wrapping. I um, can bring it down now and pull it through and push it down and there we have it and then obviously don't pull it tight that's one thing you mustn't do always try and keep your darning a bit looser I've got a little twist there that's not going to work and then 
catch it here, flip it back across, and then I'm going to go back up here. Is that right? No, that's wrong. So it's these ones I'm going under. Nope, I've gone wrong. Um, <laughs> that one, that one, that one, and pull it back through. You can see I'm really proficient at this. Absolute superstar pro. <laughs> but you know, it's fun. I'm learning constantly. Um, and then catch it and flip it and then I'm over that one, no I'm under that one, and there we go, back across. So if you're up at this end it's much easier to do it. And pull it through and just smooch it down. So I'm not going to make you endure watching the whole process, I'm going to turn the video off, carry on and or I just carry it, I might just leave the video running and I'll stop talking and then I'll speed this up. So at this point you can see I've worked it out, if I aim it nice and high where the loops are moving, I get the nice big gap and I can more easily weave through. It's still not perfect, I'm still lodging it a bit, but it's getting there, I'm getting better. That's all we can ask for really, isn't it? really is going to be the zaniest patch on this really quite pretty bluey green um, yarn but you know why blend in why not stand out what are you doing lots where's penny look at this penny where's penny good girl Hello, sweetheart. Hello.
Now you can see I've run out of um, thread before I finished. So I'm just going to put another little bit on. Debbie was saying to me that traditionally you don't sew these ends in. That gives me the heebie-jeebies a bit. Um, but then again, I do trust Debbie. She's phenomenal. Um, she better be right or else she's in trouble. Um, not really. Debbie could get away with anything. I think she's amazing. But I'm going to now just re-thread this. I've learnt a lot just redoing this now. Um, I probably shouldn't admit that I didn't know what I was doing when I started the video, but I haven't done this for a lot of years. Um, but isn't that how we teach people most when we learn ourselves? I think it is. I think it's the best way to demonstrate is by learning. Uh, not necessarily immediately at the same, oopsie, and don't pull it all the way through. Epic fail. Do as I say, not as I do. Isn't that the right one? Um, one thing I've noticed it's easy to do is catch the, the warp thread with your darning needle and that makes it difficult to um, pull it through. But there we go. Tuck that in. And once you've got more body on your weaving, you can't, it is easier to push that down like that. You can see I can get that a lot closer than I did at the beginning. Flip it over. I must admit, I'm just happy that I can do that little flip action. So I've turned it upside down. I think without realizing it during the process of doing this darning video for you, I've actually change the direction of holding this many times. Um, back up and it there and flip. And then you can see it's just going to go under. And got dogs starting to get hungry and knock the food balls around saying, feed me. And then a bit of a whinge in the background, and I'm going to go one more time and flip. Now, can I get this through? Yes, I can. There's a nice smell of sticky toffee pudding coming from the oven. I'm going to catch up there. And then comes the clever bit of trying to get this off. <laughs> okay. Right. Hang on. Oopsie. My demented hairball. Oopsie. There we go. And then I kind of just want to flip those upwards so I can slide them out. And I can take out that patch. So what I have essentially is a little woven pocket on top of my sock, which is pretty cool. And then now with my needle and thread, I can just catch the top of each of these loops and stitch them in place. I don't actually want to carry any loose change in the sole of my sock. So a little extra pocket won't quite do the, the job for me. I suppose it would be one way to stop anyone stealing it. Lotta McKelvey has just jumped onto the windowsill on top of the jigsaw puzzle Tom and I are doing, which I don't see ending well. Um, so I think it's going to scatter to the four winds when she jumps back down. I'm just going to, I'm going to cheat. I'm not going to follow Debbie's instructions. I am going to sew my ends in because I want a nice, neat finish. And she's not here, so she can't tell me off until she watches the video. Um, I'm going to drop my needle. 
I get my needle. So what I should do is just cut those ends short, but I just can't, I don't quite trust my skill as a darner to risk that. So I'm just going to hide it in here. Good girl, Lotta. Lotta down without any jigsaw puzzle pieces flying. She's got greater skills than I gave her credit for. Um, but I can tell she's going to do something very naughty any minute. So we'll have to go and... Sorry, Debbie. But think of the fun you could have if you had one of these little gadgets. As I say, they're very old fashioned. I don't think they come up on eBay very often. I think I'm lucky, I think I've got two. One that I inherited from a friend, well, friend's mother, it came in her sewing box that I was given, and one that I found myself on eBay. But there we have a rather snazzy patch. And it is strong, it's not going to wear out in any great hurry. And yeah, it's a bit of wearable art, I reckon. But just imagine you could have all different coloured warps, you could have different coloured wefts, you could really go to town, if you could be bothered, considering it is going to be on the sole of a sock. But when I cut the toe off and re-knit it, we're going to have quite a, a funky fixed sock even if Penny, when she knitted it, never got round to sewing in the end at the top, which is just typical, typical Penny. Knits beautiful things, doesn't sew in the ends. So there you have two different, but rather smart darns. I hope you've enjoyed that. And now lovely Debbie Zawinski is going to show you how to darn the traditional method using a wooden darning mushroom um, and she'll be much more articulate and efficient than I am. I hope you enjoy it. Traditionally, uh, like a darning needle was really long and quite sharp Okay. with a, with a relatively small eye and at home, gosh, I've got acres of these re... Um, cards wound with darning board. Oh yes, my granny used to have lots of those. And they were really fine, really, yeah. really fine. But then of course people were darning you know, very finely knitted socks. Yeah. So I suppose that's why the thin, sharp needle was so important. But actually it makes the darning much more difficult. So if you've got slightly thicker yarn, it makes it so Great easier. Got your Oh, one has to have one spec. <laughs> These I bought so I could look over them. Oh, very scary. Yeah, they are a bit. <laughs> I wanted wire ones so they wouldn't notice as much. So, the darning mushroom, or an orange, if you don't have a darning mushroom. Oh, really? Yeah, oh, an orange works quite well. But a darning mushroom gives you something to hold. And try not to stretch your hole too much, but keep it under a bit of tension. And I suppose I will start at the bottom. And and then we we start a wee bit below the hole because very often the, the thin area is larger than the actual hole. So your your darning has to take Are you going under each that. stitch? Well ideally one would, but you know, I'm really not that precise. Music to my ears. But if you wanted to be precise about it, you would. There are one, two, really and truly, that's only three or four stitches mm -hmm. wide, that hole. But you can't really... Um, you can't really... I mean, yeah. It's difficult to... And then you pull it through, leaving... That's a very short little stub we've left. We in a wee tail. Okay. But you don't need to worry. Do you never darn those in? You just leave oh, them. Oh, do you not? Okay. Right, the little tails, and they... Sort of fell back in. They kind of don't go anywhere. Yeah. 
um, well, this is darning according to my mum, who taught me to darn when I was a little girl. Mums are the best. Yeah. Who also taught me to knit when I was a little girl. And who never reckoned to be a sewer, but I did somehow teach myself to sew. My granny used to live with us and um, one of her favourite jobs was darning dad's socks. Oh, and she always used to have a basket of all the different things. And I think she liked to be useful, so she also used to polish his shoes as well. Oh, that's <laughs> lovely. Now, when you pull it through, the thing I was taught to do as well is don't pull it tight. Okay. Leave a little, leave, leave a tiny little, little loop. So the sock, the sock then has some, um, I suppose the darn will give a bit. And so you work yourself backwards and forwards as evenly as you can. And that's, that's my issue, you know. Um, you really should be easy. darning stripey. A stripy darn, there should be a different colour going each direction for you to <laughs> match your jumper. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I used to be quite fussy about making my darns, you know, with, with yarn that was as close as possible to the colour of the original mm -hmm. sock. Well, that's what you were taught, everything. would have been taught to do, because that's yeah. why they had all those shades of sort of love at green, weren't they? Mostly sort of that's right. love at green and brown. and They all had to be so that they would, you know, be invisible, but uh, as we were talking about earlier, um, visible mending is now a thing. Now, when you when you actually come to the hole itself, yep, you just strand it across. Oops. Those starling uh, sparrows are so noisy. Lovely. They are, and the wind. You hear the wind. Yeah. There's an enormous satisfaction in darning. Mm -hmm. It's basically a not really simple, but it breathes new life into something that, you know, a lot of work has yeah. gone into. I well, Penny knitted those for Jonathan a few years ago. It's I mean, a full sock. I've just shown, everyone can now see on the video the size of the hole in his heel. Oh, That's oh. going to take <laughs> slightly more. <laughs> We're kind of dealing with the little problems first, aren't we? Yep. Not quite I mean, sure. Sometimes you can re-knit a heel. I think that might be the case that we reconstruct it somehow. The, um, of course, there, there are certain sorts of heel that are much easier to re Yes, so the afterthought re heels, Yep. you can just reinstate them. And what we could do with this, I suppose, is or short cut it and graft well. it. And short, yeah. yes. But... Uh, Anyway, you're saying about the, the colour matching. This is yellow. It doesn't matter if everything's yellow. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yellow. So at the is a edge, you've color. just got that little loop. Yeah, and I've yeah. made that a bit, a little bit tight there. But I used to worry about the little loops when I was younger. You know, I used to think, oh dear, look at those little loops. But I was definitely told that the loops were very important and they had to go in. I have seen on a darning video, mm -hmm. somebody outlined the darn in running stitch first. Oh, right, okay. Which I looked at and I thought, hmm, yeah. But it was not something I was ever taught to do. No. I have also, I must admit, gone, I, I went through a whole load of YouTube videos looking for a good video on darning that I could send to somebody so that they would know how to darn their own socks. And I was, I wasn't impressed. Without someone <laughs> foisting it upon you when you come for lunch. <laughs> Debbie, fix my sock. But most of the YouTube videos I thought were a bit, they were a bit rough and ready. I don't think my mum would have been, would have been impressed. But, Maybe that's a dangerous thing to say. There's probably a whole lot more out there now that are mm -hmm. highly sophisticated and much better than yeah. this. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not good at learning from videos as much as I would think. I, I don't know. 
I don't tend to watch YouTube videos much, but I think it's just because I like talking to the person too. <laughs> well, I was, you see, I have a, you know, bet and bar with um, grafting or kitchen stitch and... My favourite thing. I, um, I printed off instructions to have as an aid memoir and it was instructions and photographs. Mm -hmm. And actually, the photographs were irrelevant to me. It was <laughs> just the instructions yeah. that I needed to follow. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to cut all the pictures out of my pages and pages of directions of how oh, to right, kitchen yeah. stitch and just concentrate yeah. the instructions. You see, I, I think I told you when I saw you last that apparently it was Lord Kitchener commissioned somebody to invent kitchen stitch during the First World War because the so soldiers' socks were rubbing their toes mm -hmm. in their boots when they were in, getting wet in the trenches and he wanted a seamless yes. toe, yeah. which was just um, amazing. Look at right, that. so basically we're weaving and we've completed our, our warp, our weft. I suppose it's our warp. I didn't move with the camera. I didn't move the camera <laughs> as you moved your hand. This is because that's caught in a little extra. There's a wee, see kind of gap there, but we'll not mind. And I've made mine a regular square. Yep. Now I think that actually is unnecessary. Okay. But hey ho. And now we start going back the way. And this is the point where. It can somehow sometimes come apart because we're trying to go under and over every thread. Mm -hmm. Well, when the threads are hidden in the yes. knitting at the side, you can it, lose them. You can lose them. Can you feel them just by the tension being slightly tighter than the worn sock? Not really. No, no sort of. Um, I suppose because you haven't pulled it tight as you've mm, gone across. Not, yeah, I guess so. And that's some, sometimes I think, well, if I pulled it tighter, it would, it would be a smaller darn. So... But then you can tell when something's been darned very well, when it has that lovely ease to it. Whereas, you know, when you're first darning things, you pull them all tight and you, it's got that sort of... Yes. <laughs> look. It's, that's a technical term. It's <laughs> pucker. Oh, here we are. Let's just... It doesn't seem to want to sit in the middle of this beautiful darning mushroom. Go to the side. Here we are. I remember doing this at Walnuts. Yes. Um, and I did. I did offer everyone the opportunity of having an actual sock to darn because I had brought a whole <laughs> basket of full... socks. Well, actually, they were mine. They were all a bit sort of. <laughs> Grubby and old, and sort of is that why people dead. didn't take you off on it? They certainly didn't take me up on it. I thought it was going to be a wonderful opportunity to get all my socks done by these enthusiastic learner darners, but but they were happy for a demo. But I do hope they were inspired to go home and and darn their own socks. Yes, I didn't get to see you when you were doing the demo because I was running around at that point. Best it was when you were teaching um, the police officer how to um, <laughs> that was spin. Lovely. It was just so good. It was so nice. There should be more occasions like yeah, this where where people can can interact with the police as it's on a human to human basis. Yes, exactly. A funny idea is what was his name? I think his name might have been Mark or I something. Don't know. Ooh, I can't quite pick that one up there. But he went away sporting his friendship. He did, he did. It's fun with you. I also didn't realise that your Woolness Festival would include seasoned bell ringers. Sorry, seasoned? Bell ringers. <laughs> now that was... Oh, oh is, that was when you went to yeah, the church across the road. This is, this is completely incidental to the darning, but it was amazing. It was that first evening mm -hmm. and there was this lady who'd come up from way down south and she was a bell ringer. And apparently, if you're mm -hmm. a bell ringer, you are welcome um, to participate in any <laughs> bell ringing um, 
that 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 might be be going on. I'm just gonna check how many people can you is that right? I sort of feel as though there's a hidden thread that I'm not seeing there, but anyway. So she had organized to ring um to to go to the ringing of the um the cathedral bells mm -hmm. on the Sunday. And I said, oh, how fascinating. She said, you could come too. <laughs> oh, could I? Yes, please. And so I went along and, and I just watched. And it was, it was amazing because they had all this sort of, well, shorthand for, for the sequence in which they were going to, to ring the bells. It had something to do with Bob. Well, a lot of it had to do with Bob. With Bob? Bob. Okay. They would say, Bob. And then they would... <laughs> all, all, duck. all do something different. And then at the end, this chap said, would I like a go? I said, yeah, I'd love a go. And it was a, there was a separate bell rope at the side. And he started it off. Did it not lift you off your feet and send you up into the rafters? There's well, not, a, not a lot to you, maybe. <laughs> well, he kind of helped to begin with. And eventually... You got it going, there was a rhythm, and it was the enormous bell, the great big hugest bell. Fabulous. And I thought, ooh. Sorry everybody in Newcastle. Everyone in Newcastle <laughs> is being woken up by this idiot sort of bonging the biggest bell in the bell tower. I used to do bell the, ringing when I was a child it. Um, in the church. I was in the choir and we used to get to ring the bells. Oh, well. really? Yeah, I loved it. Did you have a bob in your bell ringing? There's definitely something to do with Bob and his belly. This feels a little bit loose this year, so I think I'm going to so just, oh, you're just, just pull out the little, yeah. the little bits there. But it, it was, I mean, I actually found Walnuts to be an amazing occasion on, on loads of different levels. But the bell ringing was a really unexpected bonus. Um, I always think bell ringing now just always makes me think about the um, Dorothy L. Sayers book, The Nine Tailors. I don't know if you've ever read that. No, I haven't. Lord Peter Whimsey. I know. There's I've a man found of dead. Of you've never heard of Lord Peter Whimsey? No, I have heard oh, of him, but I haven't. And I've oh, yes. heard of Dorothy L. Sayers, but I haven't heard of it. Oh, The, the Nine title. Tailors. We studied it at school when ah, I was right. about 13. And there's a body found in the belfry. And it's in a Finland, Finland church. Um, and it's How Is He Killed? And there's no sign of any injury. Oh. How did he die? And who was he? And how did he die? But don't reveal the end, Joe. I can see you working it out. <laughs> Just in case anyone decides to read The Nine Tailors, yes. which is a bell sequence, I think. I think The Nine Tailors, Tailors is ah, a, right. a name for a sequence of bell ringing. Not sure. But he was a wrong one, the one up in the tower. And the other thing about being up in the tower is the fantastic view you got from off everywhere, you know, all over Newcastle, which was another, which is another goodie. So here we are. It's just basically weaving to and fro. I have not allowed myself quite enough to complete the job. But is that allowed? Job. Can you? That's quite allowed. Okay. Um, it's it's a bit of a toss up. Have a huge long thing that is a a bit of an issue to to cope with, yeah. or. You try not to split the threads as you I know it's difficult with um yeah this kind of merino nylon twist it has that little sort of openness to it doesn't it and if you use a blunter needle it's easier not to split the threads but then it's a little bit more difficult to actually poke it into the fabric of the sock especially mm -hmm. if they're they're finely knitted and they've got a little bit felted over the yeah over time Ooh, we'd maybe get another couple of passes out of this. Here we go. I once did a lot of darning for a friend's husband because his, his Sunday best jerseys had all gone in holes at mm -hmm. the elbows. It was before they went abroad for a year to Australia. Mm -hmm. And... Apparently, I think you're done, Dad. 
he got lots of compliments from his dad. Oh, that's funny. Well, I'm sure he did. Oh, dear. So that's my greatest claim to fame in the Blarney world. One of my projects went to Australia once. Hmm. I actually, I was on I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here, which <laughs> I've, ne I've never watched. What? And I um, used to make patchwork blankets um, for children out of fleece, you know, the polar arctic fleece, oh, jumper fleece, yes. and I would applique pictures of animals or birds or angels or one little boy I made one that had dying, uh, dolphins and aardvarks. That was oh, his chosen lovely. thing. But the um, interior designer, Anna Ryder Richardson, her partner's aunt commissioned me to make blankets for their babies that were due. And so um, I had. And then many years later, she was in the jungle and the children were going out to meet her. And a friend rang me and said, Lucy, 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 your blankets are on um, telly, quick. So I looked it up and the little girl had it over around her shoulders, no, over her lap as she was being wheeled through the airport in Australia. And then when she ran onto the bridge to meet her mum as she came off, yes. she had it round her shoulders like a cape. And I thought, I made that. That's amazing. Just as a little extra, yep. if this had been a needle with a very small eye, yep. probably you all know this, but one or two people have almost didn't. If you fold the yarn Oops, over the, the yep. head of the needle, then squeeze it tightly between Oops. finger and thumb, yep. and then slide out the needle, and then you open your fingers just a tiny bit and you poke that through the eye of the needle. Yeah, that's what I, that's what I was always taught. I think yeah. granny, my granny must have taught yeah. me that. Yeah. Um, but I'd have met people who say, oh, yep. is that no, no, how no. you do it? And it's just a little trick that... I was teaching a children's sewing class once at the shop back in the early days when I was trying to do children's classes. And it was a birthday party, in fact. And lots of the mums had stayed to help, mm -hmm. but nobody could thread a needle. Gosh. And nobody could see to thread a needle. And I was just so surprised because it's like... Yeah, a basic breathing thing. Breathing to me. Mm -hmm. um, now, my yarn is a bit too short yep. to do the whole thing. So I've just left the tail there and I'm starting... In the same Starting place. from where I left yep. off, really. And now I'm back into stabbing it through the edge of the, the sock. And to be honest, you could sort of stab it anywhere and it wouldn't matter at this point, but we'll... You really are at the end now, aren't you? Yeah. It's just a pity I hadn't put an extra few inches on. Do, do, do. Sometimes I've been tempted to think, what would happen if I tried to pick up, you know, the loose stitches at the end of the hole and mm -hmm. kind of knit it up? Yes. And I think if you've got a huge hole... It At might, the heel. <laughs> yeah, it might be a goer, that. Mm -hmm. But... But we're sticking to the... My mum's style of darling at the moment now. Mm, it sort of feels like I've got a... It looks so neat. Oh, well, I, I'm not quite sure. I have been taking a little bit of extra care because there's somebody filming all this <laughs> somebody has put me on the spot and said would they I don't see know. all that coffee you drank i hope it hasn't given you shaky hands because <laughs> i showed you my darling now you show me yours <laughs> you had a gizmo i had a gizmo and nobody was filming me that's it was a good gizmo though it you, was should, a good you gizmo. should you should film the I, gizmo will show the I will show my gizmo the dancer. but no i just um lull you into a full sense of security feed you nice food and then say and now i'm gonna video you dear. here's a needle here's some thread wrong size needle wrong color thread actually it's 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 working out splendidly this and it's a very nice color needle. that you're dialing with it is it's the sunniest of yellows yellow that means springtime now let me see do i do another another row Mm, to be honest, I probably should have had, when I started off, mm -hmm. ideally, I would have started there, back there. Yeah. Just, let's run this up. There's, there's really nothing to, to up and over it now, but we'll...
passing books to Joe. I was thinking about, you know, books and everything and having loads of things online and how it, it used to be you had to buy the book. If you didn't get the book, you didn't get the info. Yeah. I have a whole bookcase of of reference books. <laughs> Me that, too, and I always hope the information is going to jump through by osmosis. I feel like owning the books that I don't have time to read. The information's, I've got it. I have the potential for the knowledge. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, I haven't missed that opportunity to get the knowledge. <laughs> I just haven't actually applied the skills of reading. Now, beautiful. I, I reckon that we're kind of there with that. And we'll just snip this off and leave, I just leave the ends just poking. But, because in a way it's sort of already darned in. Mm -hmm. So we'll, we'll I, I now feel as though it's a risky thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> but it's what I always have done. Are these quite, quite They're sharp? very sharp. Ooh. <gasps> Aren't they lovely? Sharp scissors. Very oh. nice scissors there from oh, see, my I lovely see. friends Ian and Trisha at the Knitting Gift Shop. And I love them. Now that's amazing. Scissors that just, yep. without you having to chew at yep. things. No, they're very good scissors. Wow, yeah, those are lovely. And so here we have it. Um, I stick my, my needle into my ball of wool so I don't drop it on the floor. So we nice don't ball of wool. <laughs> we take our magic mushroom, magic darling mushroom, which is a beautiful yep. hand turned. Some, yeah, new, newly made one, but it's part of my collection. And and now, you won't look at the thin bit. I <laughs> might have to do. So there's the darn. Now it's not, it's not perfection. It's got a jiggle there, and it looks a little bit open weave at the moment. But just, with washing and wearing, yeah. it will kind of. I'm just looking at this patch together. here. That you need to do next steps. I know. I know. Not you need to. I need to do. There's. Yeah, you can see where this is really the time when darning is worth its weight in gold. Yeah. If you darn it, even if you only darn it across one way, mm -hmm. that will hold that in place and it'll be, yeah, there's less work in it. There's yeah. less work I mean, in these, it. Looking it's at a these stitching socks, time job. Looking at these socks this way up, you'd think, why bother? But then when you turn your hand over and you see all the work Penny knitted into those for her, her daddy. Yeah. You see why they have to be fixed. They're incredible. I think it was a Coop Knits pattern from one of her um, Socks Yeah books. Yeah, it's beautiful. And Penny knitted it quite a few years ago and it's just a work of art. As for my heel, Debbie. Well, there we are. I mean, it's it's definitely darnable. Needs a bigger mushroom or a large orange. <laughs> or, I don't know. What would one do at this point? One could try re-knitting the entire heel. It's just the fact that it was could a flap you? and then yeah. how to how do you reconstruct a heel flap? And it's not that it's fallen. I suppose it is just the the gusset turn, isn't it? If you look at the line. Yeah, I mean if you took it right, if you took it back, it'd be very difficult to pick up the slightly felted stitches. Yes. But you probably could take the whole thing back. But then, well, you can knit in at the sides. Now, I'd have to think about that. I, think I have done it. Be I mean, I have, I have re-knitted a, mm -hmm. a, a complete heel flap, redone the whole job. And you're kind of working on instinct a lot of the time. Yes. Um, but yeah. Maybe I need to get a bold, or maybe an orange might not be. It might be a, <laughs> a grapefruit. <laughs> a grapefruit. <laughs> but there we are. So it's got a, a lovely. Toe. I like that. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, Debbie.